everyone, I am Amy Pierce Stone of Her Art from the Attic. Today we are going to be doing a fluid painting of this beautiful butterfly on a flower using nail polish. That's right, nail polish. So much fun. This is what you'll need. You'll need a mirror or a frame, just something with glass and a border around it that will help trap the nail polish when you pour it on. You'll also need uh, a toothpick or a skewer. I used the end of a feather. <laughs> Worked great. I'm also referencing uh, this gorgeous photo from graphicstock.com. You can download it for free. I'll put a link in the description below. Graphicstock.com is actually sponsoring this video. Thank you very much. It makes it so that you guys can keep watching these tutorials and learning for free. So let's all give a huge thank you to Graphicstock. Thanks guys! They're offering a free trial also for anyone who wants, a seven day trial where you can have unlimited access to their site and their images, their, their graphic designs, vectors, all sorts of things, and you can download up to 140 images, content. So cool. One time I paid like 50 bucks for an image that I wanted to use, just wanted to cover my bases, just didn't want to infringe any kind of copyrights. You can get 140 for free? Deal! Do it. I'll put a link for that, too. Okay, after you've followed the link in the description below, you can go straight to the home page like you see here, graphicstock.com, and then you find the search bar, and you can type in anything you want to find all sorts of photos. I typed in butterfly on a flower. It gave me a ton of options. This is the photo that I chose. You can even see below that it gives you a lot of options of photos that relate to that photo. So it's pretty cool. You can just keep searching and keep searching. But so easy. So once you've done that, then we're good. Okay? Are we good? Good to go? Did I say that you also need nail polish? I mean, I think that should be obvious, but I'll show you in this video what colors you'll need. I will also put them in the description below. What colors I used and everything. So you can reference all that stuff. If you want, because you can't not get paint everywhere like me, I suggest taping the border of the frame right by the mirror so that the paint doesn't get on your frame. Let's just start with a few different shades of green and we're gonna pour it down. This will be the background. We're gonna start diagonally with this medium shade of green and then I've got a lime green that's lighter that I'm putting above that and then I'm gonna grab some turquoise. It's shimmery also and I'm putting that below that first green we laid down. Now I'm gonna grab some darker brown. It's almost a maroony brown. Put that in the bottom and then a little bit lighter green in the top corner. And I'm gonna move and groove those colors around. Now, if you've got a toothpick, you can use a toothpick. I'm using the end of a feather. And you can just swirl those colors around into each other. And how much you mix them up is totally up to you. If you want the swirls and the lines really blatantly obvious, then don't over mix it. But if you want the subtlety of the colors blending into each other, then you'll mix it more and more together. So experiment and see what you like. Again, I'm using the photo from Graphic Stock as a reference. I don't want this to look exactly like the photo, which is pretty much impossible to do when you're <laughs> doing fluid painting anyway, but I'm just using, using that as inspiration. So I'm imagining some kind of twirly, swirly grass. I'm just experimenting. But this is my background. I, I don't want it too crazy because I want the focus to go more toward the butterfly and the flower instead of the background. But I do want it to be interesting. And I want people to look at it and go, wow, how did you do that? Now at the end of my feather, I'm grabbing some of that same brown paint that I used in the corner and I'm swiping it up from the bottom. These will be the stems of my flower. And I'm, I'm pouring a little, making a bulb and forming it. Now you'll notice that the colors that I just laid down are gonna seep into the background but I'm just going to keep laying them down over and over and over as I go. And I don't want it, I don't want it to be a solid color of brown. And I'm using the background colors to give some depth to the bulbs. Now I'm going to lay down some of the colors of the flower. I've got this lighter purple color, just three dots right at the top of that bulb, and I've got this iridescent pink 
pearl color that I'm putting pouring in the middle of each purple dot and then I've got some magenta that I'm putting at the bottom of each one of those dots and I put a little in the bulb to the right too and then I just take my feather or toothpick if that's what you've got and I'm and I'm pulling the color from the bottom through so it's making these spikes again there I am layering more to the bulb putting the flower colors into the stem and bulb colors this will help all the colors become cohesive and I'm keeping in mind that a lot of what I just laid down will disappear into the background but it will again help put some of that color into the fluidity of the paint in the background hey. Are you my friend on Facebook and Instagram? Because you should be. Go find me. Let's do this. All right, as those colors are basically getting swallowed up by the background, we're going to start laying down the base of our butterfly. So pour a liberal amount of this burgundy red color and then pour a pale yellow into that. And you can see the yellow is just spreading that red out. And I'm going to help form the shape of the butterfly with the tip of my feather and I'm going to create that point at the top and just kind of make this rounded triangular shape pulling those colors and you'll notice that I will just layer and layer and layer in the butterfly wing to help it maintain its shape and also to give it some other colors so just form that shape I've got a few humps and bumps on the end pouring some more red in letting it spread a bit, mixing those colors. The cool thing about a butterfly wing is you can really let it just be fluid and do its own thing. Um, a lot of butterfly wings look like they were part of a fluid painting anyway, right? Okay, now I am going to grab some of that same iridescent pearl color that we used in the flower, and I'm going to spread that around the edges of the butterfly and I'm going to put some dots right in the butterfly and I'm going to make them a little uneven and sporadic but in somewhat of a pattern and then I am going to let those colors just kind of dry and settle a bit then I'll add some of that dark red right in the middle of those iridescent colors that I laid down and you can just watch it spread and some of it will disappear so if you don't want it to disappear you just add more and you can see some of those colors just kind of get squashed so just keep adding and layering adding and layering fluid painting is such a great medium for learning to let go of control because there is so much about the techniques of fluid painting that you think you have control, but you really don't. But you just kind of work with what you're given. And I love that because I think life is like that. You, feel, you think you have control, but you really don't. And then you just work with what you get, right? I'm adding some more dots with that same lighter iridescent color. Because I love it. I love to watch it spread. I'll put down a few more dots. You can see here I'm using the brush of the nail polish but you could also use your toothpick if you want um, but you just want to be very delicate with the dots so that they don't get bigger than you want them now I'm gonna put some bright bright pink in the center of those lighter dots and this is where it starts to really look like a butterfly wing because a lot of them have the dots that just have color within color within color then I'm taking some darker magenta color putting that right inside the bright pink dots that I laid down and putting it in the other bulb adding some more dots here and there remember you can layer as much as you want when it starts to get dry you can't layer as much so keep that in mind you've got to work with speed but you've got to find a good rhythm and a good flow because if you work too fast your colors will just disappear if you work too slow your colors will dry and then they won't um, seep into each other so I put down some yellow, a yellow dot right in the middle, and some iridescent, and then some yellow on that. Kind of just experimenting at this point. Now I'll pour down um, some of that dark maroony brown color as the butterfly's head and body. So I'm using the end of my feather. Again, you can use your toothpick or whatever, and I'm putting down a pretty good dot. That's his head. And it kind of comes 
that same color lines the base of his wing there and I'll pull the colors into the wing and into the body connecting that and then I'll from the top of the head I'm just gonna pull a swift light line up for his antennas and I'll put little dots at the top of the antennas and I'm gonna pull some of that green back down toward his head so it's a little more round although some of that will disappear later too but again just experimenting with the colors of the wings pulling them in and out pushing them together always having that false sense of security that it's gonna stay how I put it even though I've done this a million times and no that's not how fluid painting works but also at the same time being excited to learn how it will turn out and to see what kind of creation comes now you can see that the flower that I painted out previously is significantly diminished and that's okay because I mainly wanted it behind the butterfly because that's going to be harder to add at the end but now I'm going to do the petals again repeating the same process purple and then that iridescent color and then the maroon color pulling the colors from the bottom of the petal up to the tips of the petal making that spiky tip of the petal um, and these ones will be more in front and to the side of the butterfly so I'll keep adding and pouring layers. The background's a lot more dry than the first time I laid down the petals. So these petals of the flower should stay a lot better, but they'll still move around and they'll still change. So I'm adding the petals, putting more of the bulby part under the petals back in and, the, and in the stem also. And trying to really pull all the colors that I used in the butterfly and the petals into the stem and the bulbs and just just making sure they all have some of the same similar colors in all the subject matters to me that really helps pull it together and of course the background colors are naturally coming into the flower and the stem and the bulb and the butterfly so that helps it be cohesive with the background and it all just kind of melts into this gorgeous painting and, and you could just do this <laughs> I could just do this for so long except you know it is pretty fumey and I'm not a big fan of wearing the masks. Now I'm pulling a little brown into the base of those petals just to give it a little bit more depth. I'm pulling some little stripies from the bottom underneath the petals out and I'm putting some back in the body of the butterfly, back in the bu other bulb. Just layer, layer, layer. If your color disappears that you don't want it to have disappeared, just add it back in. But don't get too worried about making it look how you want because you really have limited control here just enjoy what happens and be amazed <laughs> and if you hate it try again or just keep working at it I suggest doing this outside because when you pour down nail polish like this it's super fumy also definitely wear a mask. Now I'm putting some brighter red over the body just to brighten it up a bit. I'll put some brown back in just to give it a little more depth. Wrapping up. Pretty much done here. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want my colors to mix up too much. I think I'm gonna call it good. Okay now after the paint has dried a little bit but not completely tear your tape off if you laid tape down. Um, you'll see that the paint will come up a little bit on the edges but it will settle back down however if you wait until the paint is completely dry then it could rip the paint off and it won't settle back down now you can see I got some of the paint on the border of the frame so I should have taped the whole thing to make it not get on the frame at all but I'll just paint over that it'll be good thank you everybody for watching I hope that you enjoyed this. I enjoy it. Butterfly. I love how much control you have to give up to just pour nail polish all over and move it around and not know where it's gonna settle. It's so freeing, right? We spend so much time trying to 
to control our, the elements, including my hair. See this? If I were the king of the forest, lion.